The siege of Sarajevo was the longest siege of a capital city in the history of modern warfare. After being initially besieged by the forces of the Yugoslav People's Army, Sarajevo, the capital of Bosnia and Herzegovina, was besieged by the Army of Republika Srpska from 5 April 1992 to 29 February 1996 during the Bosnian War. The siege lasted three times longer than the Battle of Stalingrad and more than a year longer than the Siege of Leningrad. After Bosnia and Herzegovina had declared independence from Yugoslavia, the Bosnian Serbs, whose strategic goal was to create a new Bosnian Serb state of Republika Srpska that would include parts of Bosnian territory, encircled Sarajevo with a siege force of 13,000 stationed in the surrounding hills. From there they assaulted the city with artillery, tanks and small arms. From 2 May 1992, the Serbs blockaded the city. The Bosnian government defense forces inside the besieged city, numbering some 70,000 troops, were poorly equipped and unable to break the siege. A total of 13,952 people were killed during the siege, including 5,434 civilians. The Arba suffered 6,137 fatalities, while Bosnian Serb military casualties numbered 2,241 soldiers killed. The 1991 census indicates that before the siege the city and its surrounding areas had a population of 525,980. There are estimates that prior to the siege the population in the city proper was 435,000. The current estimates of the number of persons living in Sarajevo range from between 300,000 to 380,000. After the war, the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia convicted two Serb officials for numerous counts of crimes against humanity committed during the siege. Stanislav Galik and Dragomir Milosevic were sentenced to life imprisonment and 29 years imprisonment respectively. One of the 11 indictments against Radovan Karadzic, the former president of the Republika Srpska, is for the siege. Background from its creation following World War II, the government of Yugoslavia kept a close watch on nationalist sentiment among the many ethnic and religious groups that composed the country, as it could have led to chaos and the breakup of the state. When Yugoslavia's longtime leader Marshal Tito died in 1980 this policy of containment underwent a dramatic reversal. Nationalism experienced a renaissance in the 1980s after violence had erupted in Kosovo. While the goal of Serbian nationalists was the centralization of a Serb-dominated Yugoslavia, other nationalities in Yugoslavia aspired to the federalization and the decentralization of the state. On 18 November 1990, the first multi-party parliamentary elections were held in Bosnia and Herzegovina, which resulted in a national assembly dominated by three ethnically based parties, which had formed a loose coalition to oust the communists from power. Croatia and Slovenia's subsequent declarations of independence and the warfare that ensued placed Bosnia and Herzegovina and its three constituent peoples in an awkward position. A significant split soon developed on the issue of whether to stay with the Yugoslav Federation or to seek independence. The Serb members of parliament, consisting mainly of Serb Democratic Party members, abandoned the central parliament in Sarajevo, and formed the assembly of the Serb people of Bosnia and Herzegovina on 24 October 1991, which marked the end of the tri-ethnic coalition that governed after the elections in 1990. This assembly established the Serbian Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina on 9 January 1992, which became the Republika Srpska in August 1992. A declaration of Bosnian sovereignty on 15 October 1991 was followed by a referendum for independence from Yugoslavia on 29 February and 1 March 1992. This referendum was boycotted by the vast majority of the Serbs. 
The turnout in the independence referendum was 63.4% and 99.7% of voters voted for independence. Bosnia and Herzegovina declared independence on 3 March 1992. Following a period of escalating tensions, the opening shots in the incipient Bosnian conflict were fired when Serb paramilitary forces attacked Bosnian Croat villages around Kapaldina on 7 March 1992 and around Bosanski Brod and Bosniak town Gorazda on 15 March. These minor attacks were followed by much more serious Serb artillery attacks on Neum on 19 March, on Bosanski Brod on 24 and 30 March 1992 on Bijeljina, start of the war. On 1 March 1992, a Serb wedding in downtown Sarajevo was attacked. Nikola Gardovic, the groom's father, was the only person killed. The attackers were reportedly Muslims and it is alleged that they were provoked when the wedding guests brandished Serbian flags as the wedding procession moved through the area of old Bazar Baskazia. The next day, Serb paramilitaries set up barricades and sniper positions near Sarajevo's parliament building, but the threatened military coup de acute TAT was thwarted by thousands of Sarajevo citizens who took to the streets in front of the snipers. Following the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina's declaration of independence from Yugoslavia on 3 March 1992, sporadic fighting broke out between Serbs and government forces all across the territory. It continued through the run-up to Bosnia and Herzegovina's recognition as an independent state. On 5 April, ethnic Serb policemen attacked police stations and then an interior ministry training school. The attack killed two officers and one civilian. The presidency of Bosnia and Herzegovina declared a state of emergency the following day. Later that day, Serb paramilitaries in Sarajevo repeated their action of the previous month. A crowd of peace marches, between 50,000 and 100,000 comprising all ethnic groups, rallied in protest. As the largest section moved towards the parliament building, gunmen shot and killed two young women in the crowd, Suwada Dolberovic and Olga Susik. They are regarded as the first casualties of the siege. Vrbanja Bridge, where they were killed, has since been renamed in their honour. On 6 April, 12 European Community foreign ministers announced that their countries would recognise the independence of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Recognition by the United States followed the next day. Shortly after this, armed conflict broke out. The Yugoslav People's Army attacked the Ministry of Training Academy in Vrace, the Central Tramway Depot and the Old Town District with mortars, artillery and tank fire, and also seized control of Sarajevo's airport. The Bosnian government had expected the international community to deploy a peacekeeping force following recognition, but it did not materialize in time to prevent war from breaking out across the country. Bosnian Serb and JNA troops overwhelmed the poorly equipped and unprepared government security forces to take control of large areas of Bosnian territory. Beginning with attacks on Bosniak civilians in eastern Bosnia, Serb military, police and paramilitary forces attacked towns and villages and then, sometimes assisted by local Serb residents, applied what soon became their standard operating procedure. Bosniak houses and apartments were systematically ransacked or burned, civilians were rounded up, some beaten or killed, and men were separated from the women. Many of the men were forcibly removed to prison camps. The women were incarcerated in detention centers in extremely unhygienic conditions and suffered numerous atrocious abuses. Many were repeatedly raped. Survivors testified that Serb soldiers and police would visit the detention centers, select one or more women, take them out and rape them. On the 22nd of April, a peace rally in front of the Republic Assembly building was broken up by shots that came from the Holiday Inn. By the end of April, the form of the siege was largely established. Early fighting for the city, 
In the months leading up to the war, JNA forces in the region began to mobilize in the hills surrounding Sarajevo. Artillery, together with other ordnance and equipment that would prove key in the coming siege of the city, was deployed at this time. In April 1992, the Bosnian government under President Alija Rizabegovic demanded that the government of Yugoslavia remove these forces. Slobodan Milosevic, the president of Serbia, agreed only to withdraw individuals who originated from outside Bosnia's borders. An insignificant number, JNA soldiers who were ethnic Serbs from Bosnia were transferred to the Bosnian Serb army under the command of General Ratko Mardic. With the VRS having rescinded its allegiance to Bosnia a few days after Bosnia seceded from Yugoslavia, on 2 May 1992, Bosnian Serb forces established a total blockade of the city. They blocked the major access roads, cutting supplies of food and medicine, and also cut off the city's utilities. Although they possessed superior weaponry they were greatly outnumbered by other soldiers who were defending the city. After numerous JNA armored columns failed to take the city, the Serbs began to concentrate their efforts on weakening it by using continual bombardment from at least 200 reinforced positions and bunkers in the surrounding hills. On 3 May 1992, members of the Army of Bosnia and Herzegovina attacked a convoy of withdrawing Yugoslav National Army soldiers on Dubrov Oljaka Street in Sarajevo, killing six and wounding many more. The attack is thought to have been in retaliation for the arrest of Bosnia's Muslim president Alija Izabegovic, who was detained at Sarajevo airport by Yugoslav police the previous day. On 30 August 1992, an artillery shell crashed into a crowded marketplace on the western edge of Sarajevo. The resulting explosion killed 15 people and wounded 100 others. On 8 January 1993, Hakia Turajlik, the deputy prime minister of Bosnia and Herzegovina, was assassinated by a Bosnian Serb soldier. Turajlik, who had gone to Sarajevo airport to greet a Turkish delegation, was returning to the city in a United Nations armored vehicle that had taken him there when a force of two tanks and 40 to 50 Bosnian Serb soldiers blockaded the road. The Serbs Acting on radioed information from a Serbian military liaison officer at the airport that Turkish fighters were on their way to reinforce the Bosnian defenders, accused the three French soldiers manning the armoured vehicle of transporting Turkish Mujahideen. After a Serbian military liaison officer identified the passenger as Turajlik, the Serbs ordered the UN soldiers to hand him over. The rear door was opened, and one of the Serbs fired seven shots at Turajlik from an automatic weapon. Six bullets struck him in the chest and arms, killing him instantly. A Bosnian Serb soldier, Goran Vasic, was eventually charged with Turajlik's murder but was ultimately acquitted of that charge in 2002. Atrocities the second half of 1992 and the first half of 1993 were the height of the siege of Sarajevo, and atrocities were committed during heavy fighting. Serb forces outside the city continuously shelled the government defenders. Inside the city, the Serbs controlled most of the major military positions and the supply of arms. With snipers taking up positions in the city, signs reading Pazite, Snajpa became commonplace in certain particularly dangerous streets, most notably Ulika Zedmaya Road Bosna. The main street, which eventually leads to the airport, were known as Sniper Alleys. The sniper killings of Admiro Izmik and Bosco Brkic, a mixed Bosnian-Serbian couple who tried to cross the lines, became a symbol of the suffering in the city. Bosnian Serb offensives were mounted to take over some neighborhoods, especially in Novo Sarajevo. 
to counterbalance the siege. On 30 May 1992 the Security Council demanded Sarajevo Airport be included in a Sarajevo security zone, which was open to UN airlifts in late June. Sarajevo's survival became strongly dependent on them. Compared with the siege force, the Bosnian government forces were very poorly armed. Bosnian black market criminals who joined the army at the outset of the war illegally smuggled arms into the city through Serb lines, and raids on Serb-held positions within the city yielded more. The Sarajevo Tunnel, completed in mid-1993, was a major asset in bypassing the international arms embargo. It helped supplies and weaponry reach the city's defenders, and enabled some inhabitants to leave. The tunnel was said to have saved Sarajevo. Reports indicated an average of approximately 329 shell impacts per day during the course of the siege, with a maximum of 3,777 on the 22nd of July 1993. This herbicide by shellfire extensively damaged the city's structures, both residential and cultural. By September 1993 it was estimated that virtually all the buildings in Sarajevo had suffered some degree of damage, and 35,000 were completely destroyed. Among buildings targeted and destroyed were hospitals and medical complexes, media and communication centers, industrial complexes government buildings and military and UN facilities. Other significant buildings damaged or destroyed included the Presidency of Bosnia and Herzegovina and the National Library, which was set on fire and burned to the ground, destroying thousands of irreplaceable texts. The shelling took a heavy toll on residents. Mass killings of civilians, primarily by mortar attacks, made headline news in the West. On 1 June 1993, 11 people were killed and 133 were wounded in an attack on a football game. On 12 July, 12 people were killed while waiting in line for water. The biggest single loss of life was the first Markley Marketplace massacre on 5 February 1994, in which 68 civilians were killed and 200 were wounded. Medical facilities were overwhelmed by the scale of the civilian casualties, and only a small number of the wounded benefited from medical evacuation programs like 1993's Operation Irma. NATO intervention. On 6 February 1994, a day after the first Markley Marketplace massacre, UN Secretary General Botrus Botrus Ghali formally requested NATO to confirm that airstrikes would be carried out immediately. On 9 February 1994, agreeing to the request of the UN, the North Atlantic Council of NATO authorized the commander of Allied Forces Southern Europe, U.S. Admiral Jeremy Bordar, to launch airstrikes against artillery and mortar positions in and around Sarajevo that were determined by UNPROFOR to be responsible for attacks against civilian targets. Only Greece failed to support the use of airstrikes, but did not veto the proposal. The Council also issued an ultimatum at the 9th of February meeting to the Bosnian Serbs demanding that they remove heavy weapons around Sarajevo by midnight of 2021 February or face airstrikes. There was some confusion surrounding compliance with the ultimatum, and Hungarian Prime Minister Petr Boros announced that his country's airspace would be closed to NATO aircraft in the event of airstrikes. On 12 February 1994, Sarajevo enjoyed its first casualty-free day in 22 months. On 5 August, the VRS seized several weapons from the Elidza weapons collection site in clear violation of the Exclusion Zone Agreement. During the seizure, the Serbs injured a Ukrainian UNPROFOR peacekeeper. In response to the attack, the UN once again requested NATO air support. Two U.S. A-10 aircraft repeatedly strafed Serb targets, prompting the Serbs to return the seized weapons to the collection site. On the 22nd of September, UNPROFOR again requested NATO air support in the Sarajevo area after Serb forces attacked a French armoured personnel carrier. 
In response, two British SEPCAT Jaguar aircraft struck and destroyed a Serb tank. As the fighting gradually widened in 1995, Bosnian Muslim forces launched a large-scale offensive in the area of Sarajevo. In response to the attack, the Bosnian Serbs seized heavy weapons from a UN-guarded depot and began shelling targets. As a retaliation for these actions, the UN commander, LT, General Rupert Smith, requested NATO airstrikes. NATO honored the request on 25 May and 26 May 1995 by bombing a Serb ammunition dump near Pale. The mission was carried out by USAF F-16S and Spanish Air Force F-18 as Hornet armed with laser-guided bombs. The Serbs then seized 377 UNPROFOR hostages and used them as human shields for a variety of targets in Bosnia, forcing NATO to end its strikes. On 27 May 1995, Serb soldiers posing as French troops captured two UN observation posts at either end of the front line via Barnia Bridge without firing a shot. They wore French uniforms, flak jackets and helmets, were armed with French weapons and drove a French armoured personnel carrier, all stolen from UN troops detained outside the city. The soldiers disarmed the 12 peacekeepers at gunpoint. Ten were taken to an unknown destination while two remained on the bridge as human shields. The French responded by sending 30 troops, backed by six light tanks, to storm the northern end of the bridge. Two French soldiers were killed in the clash and five were wounded, while four Serb soldiers were killed and four were taken prisoner. At the end of the day, the Serbs remained in control of the southern portion of the bridge while the French occupied the northern portion. The Serbs later abandoned the southern portion of the bridge. In 1995, the international forces firmly turned against the besiegers after the second Markali massacre of 28 August, in which 37 people were killed and 90 wounded. On 30 August, the Secretary-General of NATO announced the start of air strikes, supported by UNPROFOR Rapid Reaction Force artillery attacks. On that same day, a French Mirage 2000 was downed by a Bosnian Serb shoulder-fired Sam near Pale. On 1 September, NATO and the UN demanded the lifting of the siege, removal of heavy weapons from the heavy weapons exclusion zone around Sarajevo, and complete security of other UN safe areas. The Bosnian Serb leaders were given the deadline of 4 September, and the Operation Deliberate Force bombing campaign was suspended. Heavy weapons had not been removed when the deadline passed. On 5 September, airstrikes resumed on Bosnian Serb positions around Sarajevo and near the Bosnian Serb headquarters at Pale. On 14 September, they were again suspended this time to allow the implementation of an agreement with the Bosnian Serbs which included the withdrawal of heavy weapons from the exclusion zone. Finally, on 20 September 1995, French General Bernard Jean Vier and U.S. Admiral Leighton W. Smith, Jr., agreed that it was not necessary to resume the strikes as the Bosnian Serbs had complied with the UN's conditions. Operation Deliberate Force was terminated.